Greetings and welcome back to Equestrians Library. We took a bit of a break there at the end of 2016, but we're back to finish covering the chapters in this lovely book for 2017. So let's pick up where we left off. We're going to be talking about the Palio races in Italy that started in the late Renaissance, and a couple of them still continue today, though probably the most famous one is the Palio di Siena, which is still held in the plaza of the town Siena. And there have been a couple of improvements over the years. The riders still ride the horses bareback. There are still 10 horses in the race, each representing a neighborhood group or contrada. And the winner still receives the palio, which is the beautiful blanket um, that is the prize, and, as well as bragging rights you know, for the neighborhood and the family that owns the horse. But a few things that they've, they've changed over the years is now they trek in dirt so that the horses aren't running on the cobblestones anymore and the riders wear helmets. So a few safety measures have been put in place for both the riders and the horses' safety. However, um, this tradition is really interesting because since this, this was a way for you know, wealthy families to show off their wealth and compete with other wealthy families in a very stylized venue, as Elizabeth Toby writes in her chapter on the Palio race from, this, from the, uh, this book, The Culture of the Horse, we see that the horse breeding and gifting of horses between the Christian Italian city-states and the Muslim and uh, powers that controlled Northern Africa and Turkey at the time, you know, they, they were all wanting to trade through the Mediterranean and ports could be dangerous because, you know, people weren't always getting along uh, for various reasons. And so part of the way to smooth trade efforts was to exchange gifts. And one of the gifts we see being exchanged in this time period between these two, you know, cultural leaders or leaders from these cultural groups are horses for racing. And so the, you see the, the Turks and the North Africans giving horses to the Italians who are then breeding them and racing them in these polyar races for status. This is my orange kitty cat. This is Shimano. He'll, he's joining us today. So it's, it's all very interesting. And as she points out though, this tradition um, or the idea of it has continued. She opens up her chapter by talking about the uh, Arab royal family offering their uh, Kentucky Derby winner to the victims of the 9-11 bombings in New York. Now, the offer was never actually taken up, but it was at least extended. And so for she, she couches what we're reading about happening in the early modern period with something that happened very recently in our own history, uh, the gift of a racehorse from a Muslim Near Eastern country to a predominantly Christian West. So here you have it, the continued tradition of, hey, let's smooth things over, I'll give you a racehorse to show that we need to get along. Uh, what is interesting though is that in Italy, not only were these horses bred and bragged about, you know, I have this great Barbary stallion, or I have this great Turkish stallion, or I have this great Moorish stallion, because remember, breeds weren't as defined as they are now. You start to have the Italians, uh, owners of these horses, and the people watching them, they, they start to in, remark upon these horses as individuals. We have portraits that come up at this time period of these polio winners and you know they probably went on to sire other polio winners and you have also poems being rewritten to integrate some of their older mythologies into or integrate the polio race with some of their older mythological uh, scenes or characters and one of them is um, a poem in the Gonzaga Codis goes even further in praising the victorious Mantuan horse Deino Sorrow in verse. 
And so here's this poem. Neither Dano nor pa Pardo, nor wild thing, nor arrow from the bow and fury shot, nor radiance from the sky through the colored air, ever passed so soon morning or evening. Neither Phoebus, whose charger, whose speed has not yet ever, ever been surpassed, nor wind in every force has ever extinguished, ever showed such ferocity. As in running did the fleet sorrow, passing in the midst of the city of the flower, to win the Baptist the prize of gold. Glory of my Francesco, eternal honor, for which the Gonzaga from the Indian Ocean to Mauritania will always have fame of his great bravery. Put on the feathers and wings on your back. You have proven yourself sorrow, and always with the hold of Indian Ocean to Mauritania, and the, and the one and the other heaven be struck. The virtue that God entrusted you is spread with the clamoring among many people. Turco, Turco, all of Italy cries. So at this point, uh, this racehorse, this Palio horse, died, and he's comparing the horse to Pegasus and saying, oh, is, you know, it's almost like saying, oh, you were so great, you person, and saying that they're going to be an angel, right? It was some great winged being. And so that's interesting, right? And he's attributing human characteristics to the horse, like virtue. And this is something that wasn't very common and hadn't really been seen when regarding horses. So the polio race and the importance of the polio race culturally um, and politically brings up the rise of being able to say this particular animal is amazing and we're going to talk about, usually him, apparently, him for a really long time. And I find this really interesting, this development out of you know, gifts to try to ease trade and lessen violence using the gift of a racehorse and then the races and the communities to, you know, um, ensure political gains and bragging rights among the city leaders and the different neighborhoods. It's just, it's all very interesting. And then how that brings about the rise of the horse as an individual animal and not just, oh, well, he was my racehorse. He was, that was that steep. So anyway, that is the polio race and its importance in early modern Italy.